Hello everybody, with me today is a recipe of different cigars, and you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. If you're a fan of Corojo cigars, you can find them on our website at oaklandtobacconist.com. So with me today is a special lineup, a very special lineup, in fact, four different cigars that uses a favorite type of tobacco here at the shop, uh, as well as my personal favorites of mine and my wife as well. And that is the topic of Corojo tobacco. We've seen Corojo in its various forms, and I wanted to sort of give a breakdown of what you can expect when it's in different regions or in the hands of different blenders. Right now I'm smoking the Corojo 5 by Gran Habano. Phenomenal stick. Very nice, even flavor, more on the medium side in strength, but very pleasant on the palate. So, what is Corojo tobacco? Where did it come from? Originally, it was a Cuban seed. Corojo was indigenous to Cuba as refugees left to Florida and then settled in Dominican Republic, settled in Nicaragua. Later, the seed was attempted to be grown in other regions. Prominent figures such as like Justo Oroa, Christian Oroa, of the Oroa family, such as uh, launching brands like Camacho, Aladino, CLE, and the list goes on. They started growing it in Honduras. When it's grown in Honduras, Corojo tobacco has this rather rich, sweet element to it. Not so much pepper, not so much wood that you might find in other interpretations, but it's definitely on the sweeter side. Maybe like an earthiness to it, but often it's not always associated with power. You have some exceptions like Camacho Red, but not always is it associated with strength and power. It's more of this like sweeter complexity, depending on what you want to fill it with. Then later, uh, trying to grow it in Nicaragua, Unfortunately, Corojo is susceptible to things like uh, black shank or blue mold, diseases that attack the tobacco plant. So experimenting with it, there was a hybrid seed that came out known as Corojo 99. This is often seen in Nicaragua by Aganorsa, the Corojo 9. Unlike the Honduras varietal grown in that region, that type of tobacco tends to be more robust. You have some notes like pepper, like dark wood, dark earth. Um, also some sweetness, but this complexity or this play between power, strength, sweetness, and spice. So oftentimes you will see that interpretation drawn from Corojo grown in Nicaragua. With me, I have four different interpretations of Corojo tobacco. So the first is what I'm smoking right now. This is the Gran Habano Corojo 5 in Gran Robusto, one of their most popular blends. This Corojo has good amount of sweetness, very much a fruity note to it, like, like almost like an apple-y type version to it, but also a heavy note of cedar. So you have this cedar wood, hardly any hint of pepper whatsoever, but a great complexity. Its shade of this Corojo is more of like a darker brown, like an earthy brown, but there is this shine to the wrapper leaf that has this, this oily wrapper leaf. To me, when I see an oily leaf, I think it has a good amount of flavor to it because of the oils of that tobacco. But definitely on the uh, like sort of like muddy coffee type shade to it, um, minimal veins, but very complex and quite a bit of sweetness and wood to it, very wood dominant. Another interpretation also coming from Honduras is the new Casa Cuevas Patrimonial. This cigar is a very, very complex type of transition. It has a little bit of sheen to it, a bit lighter on the shade, more like a creamed coffee type shade or lighter earth. The veins are rather pronounced as well, but this cigar will transition into various different flavors. And what's so surprising is that sometimes when you light up a cigar and you have that power, that strength behind it, maybe a lot of pepper or a lot of just punch, that can be that the cigar leaves are pointed towards the end where you get that aggression and you get a lot of that power and then it kind of mellows as you smoke it through well the patrimonio actually starts very smooth not too much pepper and then it really starts ramping up as you smoke it a really cool transition and awesome to try but this is a Honduran Corojo so it has that sweetness it has a little bit of that cedar a little bit of that earth but just all around a very complex cigar now next on the opposite side we hop over to Nicaragua where we have Aganorsa's torch this is a unfinished brush foot so at the bottom you have just binder and filler which you taste you get the sense of that tobacco and then it transitions into wrapper leaf and you have that transition as well the Corojo wrapper here is rather rustic not much on that shiny hue that some of the Hondurans have as, as well as having a bit more of a, a punch to it it's kind of that play between sweetness and spice and uh, you have a lot of the rustic elements of like a dark oak 
You also have a little bit of coffee on the back end, and it's a good representation of what Agonorsa's Corojo 99 tastes like. It's more of like a signature type of blend that they have with a little bit of strength behind it, and it's a really good interpretation. Then finally, on one of the most unique sides is the Night Watch, Guardian of the Farm Night Watch. This uses a shade-grown Corojo Maduro wrapper. So they take this leaf, they grow it under cheesecloth to filter the sun, and then they ferment it to be a Maduro. What that brings is a very dark, Dark shade, as you can see, indicative to the uh, leaf itself. It's definitely darker. It has more of a toothy aspect to it. And the, the flavors you're going to get from here is rather different. You have some of that pepper, you have some of that sweetness, but you also have like this espresso, like coffeeness on the back end, dark oak, dark, richer flavors. And this is also a Corojo 99 seed, just grown under shade and fermented to be a Maduro. So these are the various interpretations of what Corojo tobacco can do from Honduras and from Nicaragua. And now's the time to expand your palate. Try different cigars with using the Corojo wrapper, see the differences and also see the similarities because I guarantee there are quite a bit. You can see what Nicaraguan tastes like versus like what Honduras might taste like, what they bring to the plate when they're growing in those regions. It's often said that in the industry, it's like having different chefs within the kitchen and what they come up with. So thank you again always for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Corojo Tobacco. Once again, I'm Eric and you have been watching Oakland Tobacconist.